Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. I have a nice fancy fold card for you today. It's been requested for by Janice, so this one's for you Janice. Um, and it's called a pop out swing card. Open it up and that swings out. Absolutely delightful. Um, I have seen this kind of card before, but where you, you're told to open it like that, and I think they say that because this bit isn't fixed but I like this one because this is all adhered into the card obviously it stands up beautifully um, really lovely so I'm very very pleased with this um, the card that Janice actually asked if I would do was more of a 6x6 six six card so let me just explain to you how I finished up doing this so first of all this was my first card which is more what Janice was after um, and it worked well pleased with it except we don't have any layering square dies which you really need for this and the layering square dies that have just retired aren't big enough so what I did on here was I used strips of designer series paper and I just felt that that looked really very amateurish I wasn't happy this aperture is die cut uh, no it is die it's cut with, by using your trimmer which means I could have done it with that one as well and I could have done it with the white but I think I'm not sure that any of you would be too happy having to do all that cutting I mean I'm not overly fond of using my trimmer for cutting um, you probably know that I tend to stop short of my measurements and finish off with my scissors because I'm always going over so then I decided I'd try a smaller size and my first one was this and I was pleased with it um, but the only problem I had was I was struggling to do the frame around there you can see I had a white one there first and then I did the, the designer series paper then I had another go where I did the white underneath with the designer series paper on top and I was thinking I really do like this one Okay, so just imagine that it would have been like that. But the problem with this one is, you see how much wider that side is to that side? I wasn't impressed with that one at all. So then I started concentrating on this bit. And the next one I did was this. And I've used, well this is retired. Um, because I was getting a bit conscious about how many uh, cards I'd made by this time. So I was getting there, I was pleased with that. And with that one, what I did was I used that bit there, which was die cut from in there and put it on the back, which is just an option. And I did that one as well, which I thought I quite like that, just with the white and without the designer series paper, um, which, because of what I'm showing you to do now, you can stop there. You, you can stop there, you don't have to do this one. But this is what I'm going to show you how to make now. I'll give you the card pieces that you need. I think I will be able to work out the American sizes, North America. Um, they'll be in the box below with the A4 inches and A4 centimeters and the North American sizes, which is people who use letter size cardstock, that will be um, marked NA for North America, so that I include Canadians in that as well. So the cardstock you're going to be needing, uh, two pieces of Calypso coral, both of them that measure five and three quarter inches by eight and a quarter, one of them to be scored at four and one eighth and fold in half and that is your normal regular card base the other one we need to work on and then you need a two pieces of basic white and they measure one and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches a piece of designer series paper and I'm using sweet as a peach and this measures one and three quarter inches by five and three eighths inches for the front of the card, you need a piece of basic white, which measures three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches, and a piece of designer series paper, which measures three and three quarter inches by five and three eighths inches. 
and I've lost one piece. Is that it? And that measures three and three quarters by. All right, and you need a piece of basic white which measures two and three eighths inches by three and three quarter inches. You'll also need some scraps if you're planning to do like this one that has been die cut from some designer series paper. Um, if you want to stamp one of those, if you want to do this card, then you would need extra white. And if you're doing an extra sentiment, you'll need a bit of white for that. Um, and I've got a scrap for that because I am going to do mine as extra. But I'm going to stamp my image straight onto there. So what we are going to do first is we're going to work on this piece. In fact, I'm not sure I've written all my information on this one, have I? What did I do with my other book? Excuse me while I have a quiet little panic. Um, okay, let's rely on me to remember. Um, yeah, I didn't write it down. Okay, I'll be fine. Don't worry, don't panic. Okay, so with this on the horizontal side, first of all, score at four and one eighth, which is your normal card fold, and then come back and score at two and one sixteenth. The sixteenth is the first little mark past the two. Okay, that little one there. That's your one sixteenth. That's the only sixteenth that I'm going to give you. Two and one sixteenth. And then if you turn your cardstock around, do two and one sixteenth of an inch from the other end as well. Now what you need to do is to move the uh, scoring blade out of the way and you need to do some cutting. And what we're going to do is we are going to leave uh, three quarter of an inch strips there and we're going to cut this big strip out of the way. We don't need that. So, in fact, no, it's five eighths. You can do either actually, but we're stitched five eighths because that's what I've done. So we're going to cut from there down to this first score line. So get my cutting blade there. Now because I'm looking at this at a side angle, I will stop short of that two and one sixteenth line and I'll finish it off with my scissors. <laughs> I've almost hit the deck there really. Right, five eighths again on this side and we're going to repeat what we've just done. Cut down to the score line, which I'm going to do there. And then we are going to cut from that cut line there down to cut that line. And you cut right on your score line. So if you put your score line into the cutting track where you actually did your bit of scoring, you know your blade is going to be correct and you should start at five eighths of an inch. I'm starting at three quarters I think to make sure that I don't go wrong and then come down to the next cutting line. Okay I'm just going to finish mine off with scissors. If yours hasn't fallen away you'll need to do this as well and all I need is that little snip there oh, I need to go this side as well and then snip that one there we go okay so I have taken the score line off onto that piece there that can be used for something else now we don't need our trimmer we need our bone folder and we are going to with our cardstock like this, we are going to fold those back. That's our mountain fold. We're going to have another mountain fold 
and then we're going to have a valley fold. But before you do those, let's concentrate on these two because we need to make sure that they line up straight against that edge. Give that a really good burnish. Make that make sure that one really lines up. And then give that a good burnish. And we give this one a good fold. In fact, I need to do that because I didn't burnish that one. I know I didn't. Okay, make sure that's really good. And this is the belly fold. Just make sure it all's lining up nice and straight. Okay, just make sure I've done that one correctly. Okay. So put that on one side for the time being. We'll do this one. I want to do the layering around the outside, which is for me the most difficult bit. Everything else after that is plain sailing. That's plain sailing as well, that wasn't difficult. But this really needs my concentration on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm using the stitched rectangle dies and I am going to be using number five two three four five six did I use number seven in the end I can't remember oh and I'm also going to be needing this one number one in the slim dies I'm going to use that for my sentiment Right, I'm going to double check everything I do before I go ahead with it, before I start telling you what you should be doing. And that should be, yes. So number five, we are going to cut our window. And for this one, I just eyeball it. Well, no, that's not true, actually, I don't. I do make sure that I'm straight on with this brilliant ruler here, which I wish was only six inches long. Um, that's the wrong side, whoops, that's the wrong side of my card. It's one of those where that side is a tad short, so I always put that one at the back. Okay, now let's try this, it should be about five eighths. Right, that's a tad over five eighths, that's a tad over five eighths, right somewhere. I have some low tack tape. I'll just make sure that I'm straight this way. Straight on the line. Oh yes, yeah, straight on the line. On this side must be about the same. Yes, good, good. There's hope for me yet. Oops, there's another piece. Although this is sold as low tack adhesive I still have to put it on my sleeve and then I have to put it on my um, uh, skin as well to make sure it is low tack right I'm using my big shot I think I need new tack on this this is peeling off I have used it loads of times. Right, what I want to do is I want to cut this, but I don't want the pressure from the rollers to come past this line here. So I'm going to put my top cutting mat, you see where, where do you come from? Um, you can see where there's like a bevel edge there. I am going to put the start of the bevel, which is about there, I think you can see that. Yep. I'm going to put that so it lines up across there. If I get these straight, that should work. Well, that's very, very close. I'm happy with that. 
and the disadvantage of putting this through your machine straight is it's a lot of effort to crank this through. I'll show you later when I do one, another one of these, but I do it sideways. You'll notice a difference. Okay, so there's one, and there's two. Very gently pull this off. Yes, it's finally giving up, it's tearing now. Or at least the tape, the actual tape is tearing. So gently take that out. Right now I've got this up. Now this piece, we are going to be using it again. Okay, so that's a start, that's good. Um, I'm going to move the Big Shot out of the way for a minute. And I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to adhere that onto there with my little one eighth of an inch gap all round. Now when you do this just put glue on the very outside. Don't put any glue on the middle in here and I'll show you why. Let's just get rid of that lump of gunge. Okay. So, take your time with this bit, it's really well worth it. Don't forget that Stamping Up have a, dis um, a sale on Designer Series paper at the moment until the 2nd of August, and this is one of them. Um, where's my tweezers? Also, remember which is your right way up. Doesn't matter at the moment, but it will do. So what I'm going to do is, once I've got this piece, these pieces adhered together, I'm going to put a little pencil mark so that I don't forget. Because some things are up the right way, some things are sideways, what's it? But I decided that is what is going to be my top. All right, so I'm just going to do a little arrow up there. Now, we've got to make this have a cut hole there so it fits onto there. And this is one of the, the main problem that I had, really. So that is going to fit on to the front like that, which is your normal middle layer and top layer. Okay, so everything is normal so far. So what I do is I turn this over and I put it on that side. And I line it up exactly the same as what it looked like on the front. But looking at it from the back. Okay. Now once that is in place, turn it over without allowing it to move. Now we need to cut that piece off. So what I do is I draw a pencil mark in the corners. And one on the side, one on the side, one on the side, and one on the side. So the next one I need to cut out is size 6 and size 6 is going to, that's not size 6, this is size 6, okay, 
So that's the size we've just done. This one is bigger. And we are going to fit this around our pencil line. And we are going to make sure we've got the same sort of gap either side. Okay, so I can see my pencil line there. I can see a pencil line there. There's one there, one there. So that's got to go up a bit. Now remembering, this is where I said you need to remember what is your top. Okay, I should have pointed that out as I went. Okay, so that fitted nicely there. Then I went over this side and I have to make sure that my top is still up there. The reason is when I'm putting this on here, that fits in with that. This looks like it's more narrow than this one. So if I put this upside down, it's not going to fit once I've cut this bit out. I'll show you what I mean. So let me, I've got the corners here as well. So I'm just looking at this to judge as close as I can to make sure that the gap down here, gap down there, across there and across there are all the same and I've got the corners here to guide as well. Okay, so I think that is probably pretty good. So again, I don't know that those pieces of tape are going to hold this for me. I might have to get some other bits. Oh, I can see where it is. I'm just looking across for the roll of my tape. So let's hold that down there. That on my skirt sleeve. The skin. I don't wear designer clothes, so I can afford to do this to my clothes. And another bit. And there we go. Put that on my skin too. So I know the diagonal ones are going to be the new pieces. Right, let's get the big shot back again. Now because this piece is smaller, I can put it on my platform at an angle and you will see it will go through so much easier. Look, those two have stayed in place now because I've brought these two new ones in. Shall I take these off? They are new so they're more likely to be a bit risky for me. Well that one was easy. Okay let's see what happens. See no awful clunk that way. Again, very gently pull this off. The most likely place where you're going to tear when you pull this tape off is right at the very beginning. That's the weakest point. After that, as long as you pull it slowly, you should be okay. I'll pop that one there. I don't think I'm going... Am I going to use this again? I don't know. Oops, that's torn. As you know, I don't normally use tape. But I just felt that this needs to be so correct. If that's a correct saying, I don't know if it is. It sounds terrible English to me. So if we take this off. There's my arrow. Oh, you silly Billy. Where's my done with my arrow? 
it's not there. Oh, it's right there. Okay, so that's my top. Right, now first of all with these, you should find that they both come apart so that you'll be able to use that for something. And you could actually plan for something to be used for that as well, just remove the pencil marks. As you can imagine, I've got quite a big pile of them over there. Now, if I've done this correctly, that will fit on there. Even gaps all round. Well, there you go. Look at that. Move it over a bit. Just trying to make sure that I could see as much orange around all four sides. Now, had I got this muddled up and tried to put that that way, as you can see, it wouldn't work. If I put it so that I get the right sides here, you see there's too much there, not enough there. So if you've got a directional pattern, just be careful with it. Oh, good. I can breathe now. I can relax. This was the only bit that was really, really bothering me. So I'm going to put this on, she says. You've forgotten which is the right way again. It was that, wasn't it? That's better. If you just remember to do what I say rather than do what I do, you'll be fine. I've turned it upside down again, haven't I? Why don't I pay attention? down a bit but I think it's probably a bit too late now. It's not too bad, it's not as bad as that one that I showed you. Okay so that's that. That's whew. thank goodness. Right now this piece is the one that you cut out of there. Now we need to cut this down and we need to cut this down to right, what I do with this we're going to cut all the stitches off first of all this has got to finish up to be two and a half inches by three and seven eighths but before you start worrying about what the size is if you just line the stitches up to the end of that brown line up here and slice those off so that's all you're taking off that little bit there okay if you do two sides and now you're coming to this which should be two and a half inches so you can line that up slice off what's left. Crikey, I did that close. Too close. So this is a piece at the back. So don't cut off that. I'm surprised at that. Hmm. Let me see. I'm going to see how this works out. And this should be three and seven eighths. That's also not quite right. So 
where's my white piece? It should fit onto there. That is a bit too short. Okay, back to the drawing board. I'm going to forget that. That didn't work. It should have done. So I'm going to get myself a scrap and cut myself a piece that measures two and a half. Is that three and seven eighths? Yep. Two and a half. By three and seven eighths. So the wisp of white piece fits on there beautifully, okay? I'm going to have to play with that to find out what, why that happened then. Makes sense, doesn't it? If you take that piece and you just take a tiny amount off, it should work. Anyway, we're going to pop, be popping that piece in there. It's got to be smaller so that it can move freely, which is why I was just cutting off the um, inches. So now we're going to sort out this piece. So if you bring this one back and open your card so you've got your aperture there and it's up at the top. Then with this one, you want it, so you fold these up, these two here, lay it down so you've got your two legs. I'm going to call these legs. Okay, so we're going to adhere these onto here. We're going to put the glue on here and then bring this over. But when you glue it, once you bring this one over, don't make it so that that won't close nicely. It goes up to the score line it doesn't go over the score line and then also when you're once you've got your glue on and you bring this over you've got to make sure that it's not coming out over here okay you just need to wait a handful of seconds to give Tombow time to grip so that you can actually open it up without it falling apart and moving and what have you Okay, so now all of this should line up down here because both pieces were exactly the same. Okay, so now that feels as if it's closing nicely. Just give Tombo just a few seconds there so that you can open this up and then you can make sure that this is all in place. If you leave it too long, Tombow will have done too good a job for you and you won't be able to move it. Yep, that's right. And that's gone right up to the score line, but not over it. Okay. And once you've done that piece, we need to put this piece to adhere down here and this is going to fit on absolutely exactly, okay? You won't see any bits there. Check it from the front, check it from the sides, check it every which way. Yep, not visible anywhere. Slightly if I tilt it. Stick that down. It's 
make sure it's all stuck down nicely. And then that is our mechanism sorted. Okay, so card can be opened up properly. So before I move, oh, let's do these inside pieces here. What I planned for them was one is going to just have a piece of white, the other is going to have a piece of white with the designer series paper. If you like this sweet as a peach, sweet, don't forget that I have a PDF for sale um, and it contains 15 projects from stamping up demonstrators from around the world and that is available for everybody to purchase it doesn't matter where you live I'm not allowed to sell stamping up products around the world but I can sell things like that so and as somebody said to me the other day, um, she thinks that it's a great idea for um, applying the ideas on those 15 cards to other projects for other um, suites and things, which is very true. Oops, move that one out of the way. I left that one blank so there would be plenty of room for writing on. If you wanted to, there's no reason why you couldn't decorate that piece. Yes, there is. That's part of the mechanism. Forget that. Okay. So now for the mechanism, I'm going to decorate this first. And I am using the Sweet as a Peach. I'm going to use this and the three peaches. The Happy Birthday that I'm using is going to be from Blossoms in Bloom. I'm going to be using that one. I'm not sure at the moment whether that's going to go across the bottom here or whether I'm going to put it across the bottom there. The jury is out on that one. And now I'm not going to use the dies for this, am I? Because I'm going to stamp straight onto here. So my stamps, I have one here, one here, and I have one here. And my ink, I know that I moved the Calypso Coral, didn't I? I was using it. Oh, here we go. And what colour should we do the happy birthday? I suppose it should be Calypso Coral, couldn't, shouldn't it? Okay. So I'm going to do the leaves in Pear Pizzazz. Oops. I didn't stick that down very well, did I? Let me just test this on my scrap paper. Yes, that's good. I've been re-inking a lot of my ink pads recently and I do tend to be a bit heavy-handed with it. So sometimes I have to stamp off before I get a good impression. And if I go up, that'll leave me room, hopefully, for the sentiment. I'm a bit concerned that the peaches might go off the edge now. Let's have a look. Well, let's put this one away first, otherwise I'll have green peaches. Right, this is Calypso Coral. Now, remind myself how did these go I think that one I 
in fact I've got a spare one here somewhere haven't I? One that I've done previously. It's always useful to keep these kind of things. In fact if I thought about it I could have used the could have cut that out couldn't I? Oh well, never mind. Too late. Right so Ah, that's the one with the little pointy bit. So the pointy bit comes down from... You got it upside down. Actually, I'm not sure which is the right, right way up for these. I think that is because of the lines coming down there. Which means if I'm going to put it like that, it's going to be upside down. And that's the way I've stamped it on here. I could have a happy birthday above it. Yeah, okay, I'm cool with that. Right, so that's going to go there. Okay, right, let's stamp this off first. Do I want one or two? Oh, number one. Okay. There we go, that's good. A bit dark at the moment, but that will lighten up slightly. Now, if I'm going to do that there, where's my happy birthday? Um, do you know what? I think I might prefer that stamped on a scrap piece of paper and then die cut because then I can have the stitches around there, can't I? I don't really want that like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a scrap that I brought over with me. And I said that I would do I want green? Or do I want orange? I'm going to go for Oh, I used to be indecisive, but now I'm not so sure. I think I'm going to go for green. Yes, I think green. Definitely green. So now I need to bring my big shot back in again to cut that out. And this is the one that I'm using. Let's move that over and that out of the way. Let's just cut this off. Okay, don't move. It's amazing how different it looks when you've got it straight in front of you rather than at an angle. We'll try that one. I'm also going to put a bumblebee or two on this as well. So that's that. That's going to go up there. And I know what I did. This is very fractionally short, so I cut off the end stitches.
I just didn't like it going off the edge. There we go, that's good. Yep, we like that much better. So let's put this piece together first. If you want to pop anything up on dimensionals on your front bit, you can do. Um, it won't interfere with the mechanism of the card. There we go. Now this is going to be popped up, so you'll see what I mean. straight in the bin and we are having it this way aren't we oops okay I just think that adds a bit to have bit that little bit of dimension there now to adhere it onto here it's so easy it's going to be fitting like that. You're going to have a very slight gap all the way around. So you need to put the glue underneath this side. So if you do it from here, and then do it so that you leave a, say about an eighth of an inch gap there, eighth of an inch gap down the side, and eighth of an inch gap there. If you go right to the edge, then you'll the glue will be exposed. This is another bit where it's, it'll pay you to take a little bit of time paying attention to where you're putting your glue. There we go. Now I'm going to turn this round the other way. I just feel that it's easier for me. And I'm concentrating on the gap there, in between there and there, is approximately the same. And then I know it's going to fit in this side as well. Okay. And there you go. There's your beautiful, what's it called? Pop out swing card. So I'm just going to finish this off with my bumblebees. Um, I don't think I got the blue dots out, did I? When I put my instructions in the box underneath the video, I will change, I will add the extra bit of um, Calypso Coral under there, which should have worked, but didn't. And I'm not sure why, I'm going to have to play with it to find out. Right, we'll have one bumblebee down here. It's got a glue dot on there. But I also like to use a bit of Tombow as well. And shall we have another one? Oh, shall we have them on the leaves or not? Yeah, we'll have them on the leaves. So we'll have a glue dot. And we put a little dot of Tombow. That's it. There we go. And that's today's project for you. Sorry about the hiccup with the Calypso Coral backing there. That should have worked. I don't know why it didn't. Um, Maybe you can try it and make sure you slice off just a little bit. Um, 
I will have another play with that but equally I will put a note in the bottom there to include that extra piece um, just in case okay so there we go I love it absolutely love it hope you do too um, I think in most of my videos recently I've always done a card using this stamp set so there's that one and there's that one so one for the ladies one for the gents um, and thank you very much Janice for your request I thoroughly enjoyed doing this it was a challenge um, but I'm not afraid of a challenge and um, I appreciate it I hope you're happy too sorry it's not a six by six um, but you do need some layering guys for that really and truly many thanks for joining me today if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the box below the video I'm always happy to help you out and I do like reading your feedback I'll put the measurements below in inches and centimeters for A4 cardstock users and I will do my best to work out the North American sizes for people who use letter size cardstock if you've enjoyed my video and like to be notified each time I upload a new one please click on the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner and then click the bell so that you get the notifications and please remember that Stamping Up do have a promotion on until the 2nd of August where there is a discount on nine different designer series papers both of these are included and it's well worth stocking up now while you can get a discount on it and also I have on offer a 15 project PDF featuring the Sweet as a Peach set. I've also got um, a 15 project PDF for Pansy Patch Suite and also a 14 project um, PDF for the Sweet Strawberry set as well. So I'll put the link to that in my um, in the details in the box below towards also a link to my 24 7 online stamping up shop and if you do place an order with me first of all thank you very much I appreciate your business but also if you quote the hostess code the July hostess code when I send you happy mail at the beginning of August I would also include some free product for you so many thanks for joining me today until next time please take care stay safe and of course happy crafting Cheerio!